Good morning and welcome to this video. My name is Gene and thanks for joining me for another episode of Perspectives Behind Bars. Today I'm going to talk about cycling over 50. I'm going to go through some of my perspectives or retrospective of 2022. I'm going to go through my personal training plan and share with you a balanced approach for your own training plans and then share with you some signs of fitness and overtraining. But before I go any further, just to be aware, I am not a cycling coach and I'm not a doctor. So if you're taking on any cycling plans or any kind of new fitness plans, make sure you're healthy to do so. And if you want a real coach to help you along, then I'd recommend getting a real cycling coach. But I'm just sharing this video with you uh, for your own personal information and to help hopefully inspire you to get on your bike more and ride because it's a phenomenal sport. Okay, so just quickly, some of my original goals for 2022. I had a number of race events uh, that I uh, had entered, uh, and uh, all of these I did participate in, either as a race or um, you know just as a group ride and fun ride. So I did the Wendigo 100, which is a fat bike race. Uh, it was like minus 29 at the start, 100 kilometer race uh, in Coburg, Ontario. Really great event. There's also the Gravel Cup uh, four race series, which is held in Eastern Ontario. Uh, four races across, I think, May, June, um, August, and September. Uh, the problem I had with the first two is that I was committed to helping my daughter uh, and the rowing club at uh, several rowing events, so I couldn't go to the first two. That's fine. I had more fun going and hanging out with my daughter uh, those weekends anyway. Uh, then I did do the final two, uh, one in August and one in September uh, of those Gravel Cup race series, and they're really good, a uh, really nice event. Um, I also did the Big Red, which is 140 kilometers with about nine kilometers of a hike a bike uh, in August in Quebec in one of the most beautiful uh, scenic uh, routes uh, that follows kind of this Big Red River, uh, you know, in and around a loop, uh, beautiful bridges and wooden bridges and covered bridges and a dedicated gravel paths, uh, but some hike a bike through some single tracks, so uh, expect to... Uh, uh, have uh, some challenges uh, from that perspective, but if you're doing it with friends, it's, it's really fun. I also do the Ghost Gravel. Uh, here's my Ghost Gravel hoodie that I'm wearing right now, uh, and I've got my Ghost Gravel bottle. Uh, it's an event held third weekend in August, uh, and it's in a part of Ontario called Almaguin, which is uh, north of Muskoka's, maybe three hour drive north of Toronto, and just west of Algonquin Park, and it's sort of nestled in between uh, Georgian Bay and um, Algonquin Park. And it's this like quiet part of the world, lots of uh, gravel roads, and the it's think of it as a VIP gravel event because you're, you're encouraged to stop at every aid station, and the aid stations have gourmet food, gourmet coffee, uh, and it's just a ton of fun because you're riding with a group of uh, incredibly kind and you know, fun people to ride with. And I've made lots of friends that I think I'll have for life from the Ghost Gravel community. The other race I did was the Hurt in Halliburton, which is an eight hours uh, of uh, riding a loop, a 27 kilometer loop with about 300 meters of climbing uh, with every loop. Uh, but I got sick this year and, you know, four hours into the race, I decided to pull out. So I think it ended up only eight kilometers uh, that day. And the distance goals. So, um, so just a quick aside here, you know, I'm not your typical 50 plus year old dude. I am uh, at the end of 2021, I had an opportunity to leave work and start my own consulting practice. So I'm consulting 15 to 20 hours a week, which means I've got another 15 to 20 hours that I was previously working to now focus on cycling um, or other passions or other pursuits, uh, which means that I now have the ability to focus on my family when my family's home in the evenings and weekends. So I do most of my riding during the week and then shorter rides on the weekends. Um, so it meant that I was able to do a lot more cycling in 2022 than I'd ever done before. Uh, other goals I had were just, just to not get dropped in some of the local group rides and then do something epic. So how did 2022 turn out? In the end, uh, I ended up only riding 14,000 kilometers instead of the 15,000 kilometers. And that's uh, because actually at the end of the year, I got sick with COVID, uh, broke my hand. And uh, that just meant that I had a number of uh, weeks at uh, the end of the year, November, December, where I was just not able to ride. Uh, I did do something epic. Um, you know, I went to Flanders and I spent a week living 
and cycling out of the Flanderian Hotel in Brackle. Uh, if you go to Flanders, I highly recommend staying in that hotel. And it's in the heart of the, I think, the bastion of, of cycling. Uh, and you get to ride all these famous cobbled climbs that are used in the Tour of Flanders and some of these other spring classics. So it's a ton of fun. I think I did about 600 kilometers over the nine days I was there. Uh, it was just a phenomenal trip. Uh, again, you know, stuff happens. I mentioned this earlier that I broke my hand uh, in a silly cycling accident. I actually fell on the bike and the handlebars landed on my finger, broke my hand. It just meant that I you know, missed three or four days of riding because I've always got like you know, my bike uh, indoors here that I could ride on. Sure, it was, my hand was painful, but you know, my legs still worked. Uh, but then I got COVID and then COVID really took me out. I think the result of getting COVID meant that I was probably unproductive on the bike for about five weeks. Uh, I missed two weeks entirely just being really, really sick. And then I tried to ride again. I did 250 kilometers the week after I stopped testing positive, but I realized that my body was just cooked and uh, ended up taking another two to three weeks after that, uh, just slow recovery, uh, just some easy riding. Uh, I think it's not until this week now that I'm starting to feel better again. Um, the Ghost Gravel, here's a photo from the Ghost Gravel event that we did in August. And this is a guy named Trent. Uh, he's super fit. He's a guy over 50 as well. And he's one of these guys that's not doing like 15,000 kilometers a year, but he's doing a lot of cross training, uh, cross fitness. Uh, and he's riding his bike maybe three or four days a week, uh, but he's one of the strongest guys uh, that I've ever ridden with. Um, so, you know, again, the point I'm making here is that you don't need to do like 10 to 15 hours of riding a week. You could still be really fit on like, you know, a third of that. Like I've got lots of friends that are doing 5,000, 6,000 kilometers a year and having a lot of fun. The picture down below I put in just because uh, this is a group ride, going back to one of my objectives about being able to stay with group rides. Uh, this guy, Elliot, here in blue, he said, hey guys, we're meeting at uh, 11 o'clock. We're going to go do a ride uh, from the Gatineau Park to Wakefield and back. And uh, so I joined along. And as I show when I showed up, everybody who was there was like 20, 25 years younger than me. I thought, oh, geez, this is going to be hard. But I was happy. I was able to keep up with them throughout the whole ride. And at one point, Fraser here in white got a flat. And it was actually, uh, well, not good for him, but it was welcome for me because I got an opportunity to rest and recover, <laughs> which, because uh, I was pretty much on the line uh, and thinking I'd be dropped at that point. But I was happy to uh, uh, get the opportunity to recover a bit. So this is my approach, uh, and I work with a cycling coach. Uh, we have like a, a four-week plan. Weeks one to three are a progressive build. Week four is a recovery and adaptation week. Uh, the typical week is 10 to 14 hours, or 250 to 300 kilometers a week. Uh, Monday is like an easy rest day. Tuesdays are intervals. Wednesdays are easy or rest. Thursday is like a tempo endurance ride with some intervals. Friday is like easy or endurance, uh, and then Saturday is like easy with maybe some tempo. Uh, if I do a group ride, there'll be some efforts in there. And then Sunday is going to be more of an endurance ride. You know, and I do a lot, even in the summer, I do a lot on the trainer inside because when I'm doing intervals. I like having the trainer because the trainer you can really control. You know, your power when you're doing those intervals. Let's say 250 watts for 30 seconds or 300 watts for 30 seconds. You can really control that. Where it's very hard to do that outside uh, on the bike. Uh, and then just before I get into kind of a training plan that you could build, just what works well for me and having learned this with uh, my approach to cycling over the last few years is that I know that I need at least one four to five hour ride every couple of weeks, one set of intervals per week, then everything else that's sort of like this easy in some tempo. Um, and if I do that for three, four weeks, like the beginning of every year, uh, and then keep that up, I become really fit and really strong on the bike. So if you look at your training plan and how to put together a balanced approach, first and foremost, just focus on having fun. Like, you know, don't worry about like the details, the nitty gritty aspects of your power, your heart rate, your speed, etc. Just plan to have fun. We've got so many busy things we're already dealing with, like you know, mortgages and financial obligations and work stress and family stress. Being on a bike should be all about having fun and getting out and getting away from all those stresses and making an escape where cycling is actually cathartic in, in many uh, respects and uh, almost meditative. At least it is for me at times. 
But just remember to balance work, family, and cycling. Uh, but you know, before you get into your training plan, you have to think, you know, what are my objectives? Do I just want to keep up with the local group rides? Do I want to do some racing? Am I trying to get fit for a big epic event, like a bike touring event or some uh, bike packing event? I do have some distance goals. Am I trying to increase my uh, FTP? And if you don't know what FTP is, don't worry about it. It's called functional threshold power. That's just how much power you could put out on your bike over over an hour. And you know, some people use that as a baseline for things like you know Zwift uh, or uh, cycling or 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 any kind of training plans that you're putting together. Uh, but if you're just getting started or just trying to build out a plan, don't worry about that. Just just worry about. Uh, just focus more on how much time you can put into it and uh, making sure that you're having fun and that you're balancing that with rest and recovery. So if you're over 50, you know, one of the things that you, you need to be very aware of when you're over 50 is things like making sure you're not overtraining, uh, building in that right balance between your busy personal lives and your time on the bike. Uh, but what's more important is really just to understand kind of different paces uh, as you're building out your training plan. So there are other words to, to describe these, like zone one, all the way to zone five, but um, I'd like to just make it really simple. What's your easy pace, a tempo pace, your intensity pace? And easy is, you know, can you speak, like have a conversation with your friends as you're cycling? Or if you're not cycling with friends, can I sing one of my favorite songs while I'm riding? And if you can, then you're in that easy pace. Uh, the tempo is more of a labored conversation, harder to hold a conversation for a long period of time. But tempo is like a pace where your heart rate's elevated and you could go longer um, in that elevated heart rate. But you're um, somewhere between that fat burning zone and the sugar burning zone with your muscles. So you're you know depleting yourself a little bit more. Like if you go out and do a tempo pace for three hours, you're going to feel a lot more depleted and fatigued at the end of that ride than you will after going out at an easy pace for three hours. Then the intensity is when you're doing these intervals where you're just pushing your body as hard as you can for 30 seconds, 90 seconds, you know, two minutes. And, and that becomes uh, like, it, like you cannot talk at all, but it's the great way to build speed and stamina uh, over time. So the basics, right? If, if you could only do like five hours a week or seven hours a week, you know, this is what I would do as a, an approach to training. Just two easy sessions around an hour uh, one tempo session uh, per week, and then slowly build up uh, to be able to ride uh, like three or more hours uh, during the week, uh, some club rides or just like a long leisurely ride on the Sunday morning, and you know, make it easy. You know, don't don't go out there and beat yourself up every Sunday morning on those long rides. Just just enjoy the scenery, enjoy the beauty of being on a bike. Then as you're building up your aerobic base and as you're spending more and more time in that easy zone or the tempo zones, um, you can start adding in intensity sessions. So I would say, you know, after say four to eight weeks of doing easy and tempo sessions as your primary uh, approach to cycling, um, start adding one intensity session uh, after you've built that aerobic base. And that's like three or four sets of intervals uh, throughout a one hour session where you're warming up for 15 to 20 minutes and then the next 20 to 30 minutes is just like a series of intervals with rest and recovery in between each interval um, and then uh, a cool down phase after that. And again, it's really important to plan for recovery. So you have to remember that recovery is just as important as the workouts. So you need to have that adaptation period where your body needs to adapt to the load and the training that you're giving it so that it builds the muscle memory and the muscle responsiveness to uh, what you're asking of your body on a bike. Drink lots of water, get lots of sleep, uh, listen to your body. Remember, uh, listening to your body is really important. Uh, when your legs are tired, uh, then maybe you just should take an easy day or just a rest day. And the other thing is just do not compare yourself to others. I mean, there's so many applications out there like social media apps like Strava and Ride with GPS and Instagram that you could fall victim to comparing yourselves to so many people. And you don't really need to do that. Just focus on beating your own bar that you've set. So some signs of uh, fitness and overtraining, you know, fitness, you're setting personal records. You're no longer getting drops in club rides. Uh, you're going faster to lower heart rate than before. Uh, your resting heart rate is trending lower. And you just basically feel stronger and you're happy and you want to go out for a bike ride and you're looking forward to it, etc. You know, just that's the kind of thing that, that gets you excited because that, that's when you know you're getting fit is when you're um, feeling stronger and excited and you really want to go out for a bike ride. 
And then signs of overtraining are things like lethargy. Uh, you're just feeling like, yeah, you know, I just don't feel like riding today. You know, you're gaining weight. Um, you know, back in July of last year, I gained a lot of weight. And I realized I was just doing too much intensity. Even though July was like a really big month, I did a lot of riding. I was just gaining too much weight from being tired. Uh, my body wanted to eat a lot of sugar just to like bring my energy levels back up. And I was just spending too much time, I think, uh, in intensity zones. Uh, and it just was depleting my body. Uh, if you've got less motivation, then that means you're probably overtraining. If you've got constant muscle fatigue or soreness, that means you're overtraining. It could also be that you're dehydrated. Uh, if your heart rate in the morning is trending up, it also means that you're probably overtraining. You need to take a couple of days of rest. Um, there's also an ability to track your heart rate variability. And your heart rate variability is, uh, you know, between every beat, interval between every beat. And there's variability to that heart rate. So the more consistent it is, that means your body is in a better rested state and able to take on the training load that you want to give it. If you've got more variability in there, that means that you're either training too much or you've got fatigue or soreness or sickness that you're dealing with. So this is the HRV from the last week for me. And then over here is the heart rate variability when I had COVID. You can see it was all over the map when I had COVID because my body was trying to cope and recover and heal from uh, being infected with uh, the COVID virus. Um, and I use a tool called uh, HRV for training. It's something you do on your phone. Uh, you just you use the phone camera and it's a two minute test that you do every morning and it tells you what your, what your HRV is. So thank you for watching this video. Uh, again, I'm not a cycling coach. Uh, all I'm trying to do with this video is share with you my retrospective from 2022, my training plan, and hopefully inspire you to build out a training plan that will work for you around your your family objectives, your goals, your work-life balance, uh, and to make sure you're having fun. And you know the, the primary message is you know have fun, don't deplete yourself, don't do all of your exercise in the intensity and tempo zones. Make sure you're spending a lot of time in that in that in that easy pace. And if you like this video, please give it a like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments down below uh, how you approach training uh, as you age in your career and how you balance like cycling with family and work responsibilities. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye for now.